Hi, Taurus. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for March of 2021. Well, your birthday is right around the corner. And so you're going to be entering into your yearly mop-up period this month. And that's the last 30 days before your birthday. And it's the time when the biggest changes tend to happen because it's really time to fish or cut bait with the, the stuff that you've been up to in the last year. And the stuff of the new year is already kind of starting to swirl into position. So um, it can feel like a lot of changes are afoot. And um, if you want a solar return reading, which I really do recommend that you get in that 30 day period before your birthday, you can find a link for that in the YouTube description below. Well, Saturn is super busy traveling along through the sign of Aquarius, which for you falls in the 10th house which is the house of career and that's Saturn's house. And so Saturn is pretty happy to bring you some discipline this year in the arena of career. So I want to say a little bit about that. I might also say a little bit about Saturn in the ninth house, because if you do have Taurus rising and that's why you're watching this horoscope, then uh, Saturn might actually be in your ninth house. So, but if Saturn is in your 10th house this year, then you're going to really be feeling the pressure is on in your career and you're going to feel like you've arrived at some major milestone where you're on your metal and you're being tested to perform and and you really better step up and do that because this is your chance to turn that pressure into the opportunity to advance so um face it you know like put on your big kid pants and uh, and be the grown-up because um this is this is a a really powerful time when Saturn will um, will give you those opportunities if you respond in the right way rather than, you know, running away or cowering in fear. So mm, if Saturn sits in your ninth house, though, because you have, you know, late Taurus rising, then, um, then what you might find is that your the pressure that you're feeling is really more in the arena of life's meaning. Uh, where you're, you know, sort of in the back of your mind doing a lot of questioning, uh, very seriously asking yourself, why am I doing it all? And if that's the case, then remember, Saturn will respond uh, best if you really take responsibility. So if you ask yourself those hard questions and really listen to the answers that your heart wants to tell you, and then do something to move towards goals that have more meaning, then Saturn will provide those goals. And that can give you a lot of relief. So um, um, you can find out a lot more about Saturn in Aquarius uh, by checking the uh, 2021 news playlist, which is on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology. And you'll also find a link for that in the description below as well. So Julia has news for you about Mars and Mercury and Venus. Hey, Julia what is that news? Yeah, well, hey there, Taurus. So Mars, I'll start with him. This is the planet of action. It's a planet of energy. And where we're, wherever we have them is where we might run into some conflict too. Mm -hmm. So at the very beginning of the month on March 3rd, Mars is going to move into your second house. And that's the house of money, possessions, and values. Mm -hmm. So with Mars in this house, you could be extra impulsive with your spending, you know, where you just want to, you want something, you buy it, and you might have buyer's remorse later. So just make sure that you kind of chill out before you spe uh, spend any money and definitely don't do it if you're in a bad mood. Okay. Um, and since the second house can also represent our values, you could run into conflict with people over your values, whether they're religious, political, family values, as well as conflicts over money too. Now, Mercury, the planet of communication and mentation, starts the month in the sign of Aquarius, which is your 10th house of career. Now, it's not moving backwards in the sky anymore the way it did last month during its Mercury retrograde period, but it's still moving really slowly. But by March 6, Mercury is going to be back up to speed again, and that's when we like to officially count the retrograde cycle as complete. But still could be a little bit of squirreliness at the beginning of the month, too. 
Now in the 10th house of career, this is a wonderful time if you're doing uh, anything mercury related in your career. So anything that has to do with writing, speaking, buying and selling are also ruled by mercury too. Uh, and you could be spending this part of the cycle just kind of focusing on strategizing about your career. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. time to work on your resume if you're not in a career right now and you'd like to get into something new. Mm -hmm. Then on March 15th, mercury is going to go into your 11th house of groups. And that means that your best thought and thinking and strategies might be within a group context. So you might want to reach out to the groups in your life, whether those are recovery programs, clubs, societies, teams, or even your friendship circles if you're trying to think something through. Now, Venus, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships starts the month in the 11th house as well. Um, and with Venus here, that means that you're going to be really in a social mood, wanting to connect to more than just one person. Um, if you have a partner, then you're going to want to enjoy hanging out with them among your friends or their friends. Um, and then on, uh, it's also a great time if you're single to uh, go on a dating app too or meet someone over the internet because uh, this house also rules networks. Then on the 21st, Venus moves into the 12th house, which is the house of isolation. So then you're going to feel like withdrawing a lot more socially at the very, very end of the month. Maybe enjoying spending a little bit more time on your own. Mm. And Venus is involved with both of this month's moons, starting with the one on the 13th, and that is a new moon, which is in the sign of Pisces, and it involves Neptune also in Pisces, so it's very Piscean because Neptune rules Pisces, and it's also in its own sign. So there's a very strong theme here of dreaming and imagination and visioning, right? <clears throat> But then Venus is involved too, because here's Venus uh, hanging out with that moon <clears throat> and that sun and Neptune. And Venus brings in the relationship themes, the partnership themes, the themes about even love and romance. <clears throat> now over here we have Juno, which forms a square to this moon, which only adds, you know, onto the relationship themes. So we're calling this one dreams of partnership. And it does fall in your 11th house, as Julia was saying, and this being the house of friendship and community and tribe um, and a new moon being a good time for starting over or new beginnings, uh, a sort of a refreshing time. Um, this is a really good time to reinvigorate some of your friendships or to reestablish a love relationship on a basis of friendship. So um, there's something really sweet about that one. Now, later in the month, we have the full moon, which is happening in the sign of Libra right here in your sixth house, opposite the sun with Chiron and once again, Venus. And so there are relationship themes with this moon as well, and we're calling it love and healing. And the healing theme is because Chiron is here and that's, that's Chiron's bag. So this moon falls in your sixth house of the job and also personal organization and service. And, um, and this moon being so very relational, you may find yourself um, looking at uh, relationships in your work environment um, and also thinking about how does service flow in your relationships? Do you serve more? Are you served more? Is there a way you can bring that into balance? Is there some assertion that needs to happen in a loving way to, um, to restore a balance relative to that? So those would be really good topics to go into um, in, a, in a warm and loving, but also direct way with your partner around the time of this full moon at the end of the month. Now, um, we've got a seasonal change that goes on this month as well, and that happens on the 20th when the sun moves into Aries. Now, this is not only uh, the beginning of Aries season, a new sign, but it's also the beginning of springtime and really the beginning of the whole zodiac, which means it's the beginning of the year. So Aries is the sign that has the most vigor, drive, excitement, enthusiasm, and sheer force of will. So um, this season is a really good time for beginning stuff full stop. And there are a lot of other reasons why uh, you might find that beginning things that are big is advantaged in this season. 
The main one is that all of the outer planets are direct at once. And here you can see them. Here's Pluto. And there's no little red RX symbol next to it, which would signify that it is retrograde. Saturn is also not retrograde. Jupiter is not retrograde. And when things are not retrograde, we call that direct, by the way. Things are direct most of the time. But when they're retrograde, things can get really tangled up. Neptune is direct, Chiron is direct, and so is Uranus. And so what this means is that anything you begin is going to lack, <laughs> this is going to sound complicated, but it's going to lack a built-in self-sabotage mechanism, which means that it should work pretty well. And, um, and the fact that Mercury is direct now too only helps. So this is a really good month for beginning the really big things of life, such as a major purchase, like a car or a home or a property. Um, or it's a really good time for making a very big change in your career, like looking for a new job or changing fields, changing careers, uh, or starting a very big creative project. This is just a really good time for starting anything. So, um, now I want to leave you with a quote from Goethe. You've probably heard this before. It's pretty famous, but now is a really good time to be thinking of it this way. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. And if ever there was um, a time that that quote was made for, this is it. That's all we have for you today, Taurus. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to like it, share it widely, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, where you will find your horoscope for your rising sign and your sun sign every month. And um, also check out our website, pandoraastrology.com, where you can check your horoscope too, or see the monthly forecast, or um, get a reading with one of us, or even join a class. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.